I think that's a great introduction to something called the GS3 ball. So there are a lot of things about a putting green that a superintendent manages. We mentioned green speed, they, they measure green speed. They're also managing the, the smoothness or the, the bumpiness of a green or the trueness, the side-to-side -side variability. Uh, a, a third thing is the surface firmness. It's kind of like the Goldilocks. You don't want them too firm, you don't want them too soft, you want them just right. Well, doggone it, it makes it much easier to manage those attributes if you can assign a number to them. When you can go out and go, gosh, the greens are just right today, let's put a number to those, and then let's start tracking that over time so that we can understand how we stay in that sweet spot over and over again. And when you're able to do that, the, the superintendents are able to start to optimize and get more and more efficient. All of, all of that is, are the good things we talked about. And uh, I, I, I say that this is a ball that talks to you. It lets you know what is happening on the surface. And it measures the attributes of green speed, smoothness and trueness, as done by rolling it down a stem meter and we have a drop fixture where we are able to measure the surface firmness. All that data, similar to your fitness trackers, gets uploaded to a central platform that we call our Deacon platform, which was named after uh, Arnold Palmer's father, Deacon Palmer. So. Uh, superintendents like John have access to this platform and they can go and they can slice and dice their data, they can see where they are for a given day, and they can take a historical look back at how conditions have, have performed in response to what they've done on the putting greens. And I think for us, you know, like Eric said, the, the smoothness, if you just watch the ball, you know, you may say you saw a few bumps in between goes over ball mark imperfections. We have a number now. And that number isn't just good for daily play, but let's say we do a cultural practice like an airification, the big one that everybody loves when they go play golf somewhere and they weren't told they were airified. We can quantify that recovery. So we can take the number of the morning before we airify, and then we can tell them how many days post airification it takes to get back to that number of not just speed, but smoothness and trueness. Like if you can see a hole or you see a sand filled hole or you see sand, you think, ah, this is bad. But it could be that that channel is filled just right and the recovery is just enough that uh, they're really back to the pre airification event was, numbers. Was measuring smoothness and trueness something you would have imagined five or 10 years ago? Oh, absolutely not. Like how, when you first learned of this, what did you? When they first showed up with that ball, I was like, can I hit it? And then it was like, no, I said, okay, then what can we do with it? And the smoothness and trueness was, you know, everything you try to defend and quantify and you weren't able to, now you can.